I'm Dr. Kristen R. Bromley. This video series, which is part of my online music academy, specifically accompanies Chords and Harmony books 1 and 2 from my Method book series. Like all my books, this selection is available to purchase through Amazon and Google Play. For help, see the links in the description below. In the videos which are part of this specific course, I progress through the lessons in Chords and Harmony books 1 and 2, explaining and demonstrating concepts and playing each of the songs and exercises contained therein, so you can hear how they sound and play them right along with me. You are of course welcome to view these videos with or without the book, but with the book you can work through all the songs and exercises, and in the process learn all the various types of chords used to play music on the guitar and master your chord playing abilities. Alright, let's get to jamming in this lesson. Welcome back. So we're here for lesson five. In this lesson, we're going to be playing songs in the key of A. We're going to learn a new chord, the E7 chord. So we will now have an E major chord, an E minor chord, and an E dominant seventh chord, an E7 chord. So all three of our main types of chords will be will have an E version of each one of those. We're also going to learn uh, a couple new strumming techniques. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and get started. As we get going, we're going to start on page 28, and for this first bit we'll be working on the songs page 28 through 30, but we're going to start on page 28 right now. Um, I've got the chords drawn up here on the board, uh, but, but the diagrams are also on page 28 there. And so as a review with A, I like to finger it the way that is suggested, although an alternate fingering is shown that some people use, but I put my index finger. 2nd fret, 3rd string, my middle finger goes 2nd fret, 4th string, and my ring finger goes 2nd fret, 2nd string, and I do my best not to strum the 6th string as I'm playing the A chord. For the D, my index finger is also on that first, uh, my first finger or my index finger is also on that 2nd fret, 3rd string, my middle finger is up on that 2nd fret top string, and then my ring finger sits on the 3rd fret of the 2nd string. And on this one, I try to only strum those top 4 strings. So, as seen here. Now, E7, our new one, this one's pretty easy compared to the E chord that we were working on last time, because all we got to do is take our, in, our ring finger off. All six strings are strummed. So my index finger is at the first fret of the third string. My middle finger is at the second fret of the fifth string. And then I strum all six strings. Pretty easy. So all we have to do is take one finger off. Note the difference between the sound of the E major chord and the E7 chord. So E major, E7. E major, E7. We'll start off today by playing Midnight Special. This is a great old folk song, uh, made popular by songs like uh, bands like the Kingston Trio, other popular folk bands um, of that era where we had the folk revival, where old traditional folk music was brought again in the 60s to become at, at the level of pop music. So it became popularized again by these groups. Now we still love to play pop music, and as I mentioned in the first or second lesson, today's contemporary pop music, music that's being written right now, is really kind of like modern day folk music. So there's, there's a big connection between um, modern day pop and that early folk, which was kind of the popular music of that day, and songs sort of written about contemporary um, themes and ideas, mostly love songs, right? Love, hate, and war. Those seem to be the three things that songs are mostly written about. Occasionally legends and a, and a few other things. But We're going to use this strumming pattern that we know really well. Down, down, up, up, down, 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 up, up, down. You'll see that indicated there. We'll go ahead and play this song. This is one of the first times, if not the very first where the strumming starts before the melody comes in. And so in the melody, there's a rest right there on beat one, uh, but the chords already start strumming. So, when you wake up in the morning, 
ends. We're gonna go, we're gonna kind of swing it a little down, down, up, up, down, 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 up, up, down. Here you go, one, two, a one, two, three, four. Well, you wake up in the morning, hear the ding dong ring. Go marching to the table, see the same old. So let's move over to page 29 now. We'll start with Down in the Valley, which is number two. This song is in 3-4 time. So we're going to use our strumming pattern that we know for 3-4. Down, down, up, down. Down, down, up, down. I'm going to swing this one just a little bit too. We get these old love songs. One, two, three, one, two, up three, one, two, up three, one, two, up three. That's where our melody starts if you want to sing. And, and as I've mentioned, if singing and strumming is, is still a bit much, and it very likely could be depending on... Um, your experience playing guitar as you're going through the method series, your experience playing with singing. Sometimes when I'm working on singing, I used to play the melody while singing it. Down in the valley, valley so low. And reading notes can help with that. If you want to learn to read notes on the guitar, then the, the note reading uh, series in the, in the method book, or I should say the note reading books in the in the method book series are great for that. But you can sing right along with the melody. The other, uh, and try and match that pitch. The other thing is you can simplify the strumming until you're comfortable singing and then bring in the more complex strumming pattern so we could just do three down strums. Those are just a couple reminders about great practice techniques, but we'll go ahead you can play this right along with me however you like. If switching chords is still difficult, you can work on each one by just strumming the chord once per measure and then switching where the chord happens, just focusing on those switches. Okay. Down, down in the valley. One, two, three, three, two, one. Alright, same thing for on top of Old Smokey, same strumming pattern. This one has a pickup, so we'll have on. Uh, I, I can't sing as low, that, that low. On top of Old Smokey. So we're gonna go there. That's how this one starts. One, two, three, one. We'll take it just a slight bit faster. So I give you one, two, three, three, two, on top of old smoky, hot covered with snow. I lost my true love for courting too slow. For courting is pleasure. 
Okay, so there's on top of Old Smokey. We'll take and turn the page now over to page 30 and do a couple more. Um, the Cowboy's Lament will be the next one. <laughs> Uh, this song is sometimes also referred to as the Streets of Laredo. Again, these were made popular by groups like the Kingston Trio back during that folk revival. Sang a lot, and so they should, they're oftentimes familiar to us. Sometimes we sing them in elementary school. And this one's in 3 4. It's got that one beat pickup, so I'll give you the same. Same count off. We'll take it just a hair faster since we've been playing those others. One, two, three, three, two. As I walk down in the streets of Laredo, as I walk down in Laredo, they spied a poor cowboy wrapped up in white. So we've got a technique in this one that is new to us. This is the first time we've ever had two chords in a measure that's in 3-4 time. And that can be a little tricky. In the case of this one, we have a D. So this is the, the third to last measure in that song. We have a D and then we have an A that comes in. And, and the way we know what beat that second one comes in on, because it could come in on beat 2 or beat 3, is that it's the melody note it's written over. So the melody has quarter note, quarter note, quarter note, one, two, three, beats one, two, three. The D's over the first beat and the A is sitting over the second beat. So when we're changing, we've got one note here, one strum here on the D chord, then we're gonna go to the A for down, up, down, and then we go back to the E7. So if we slow that down, here's the last three bars, we'd have D, A, E7, Let's do the last four measures. So you're gonna have A, B, A, B7, A. Now if that's a bit tricky, catching that, it can help just to go down, down, down. So uh, D, A, A, E7, A. So the last four bars, if I do it that way, would be A, Sometimes in 3-4 time when there's more than one bar, it's nice to just keep strumming down and not catch any ups, but the up sounds nice as well, depending on what you're doing in the moment. So let's, uh, let's play those last four one more time and then we'll do the whole song. So A, B, e, A, E7, A, yes. Alright, here's the whole song. As I a one, two, three, three, two, as I Awesome. Let's go on to uh, number five, Jamaica Farewell. We're going to go back to 4-4 four, four time. Down, down, up, up, down, 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 up, up, down. So this song was made popular by groups like the Beach Boys. Sometimes those groups in the 50s and the 60s would take folk songs from other countries, particularly Latin American com countries or Mexico, the, the Caribbean, places like that. The Caribbean, however you want to say that. Whatever your pronunciation preference is. And they would uh, make arrangements of them. And the Beach Boys did one of this one. There's probably other groups, but the Beach Boys are coming to mind. So we're going to do it uh, more of a straight down, down, up, up, down, 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 up, up, down. 
So this one starts right on, no pickup measure. I mentioned at the beginning that all the songs in this lesson are in the key of A. So, and so far all we've played is A, D, and E7 chords. Well, our A chord in the key of A is our one chord. It's kind of the home chord of that key, also known as the tonic. And we have the D chord, which is the four chord, because D is step four of the A major scale. And then we've got an E7 our dominant chord or a 5-7 chord. The E is step 5 of the A major scale. Okay, so down, down, up, up, down. Okay, so here's Jamaica Farewell. One, two, a one, two, ready, and down. That may have been a little fast, so we're going to practice it just a little bit slower. Sometimes with these pop rock songs, this is a technique we're going to talk about later, but I'll introduce it a little bit here. Sometimes on beat two, I'll kind of slap the strings as I strum. I'll also sort of hit the palm of my hand on the strings for a slap strum. two and four sometimes just a little bit um you might be hearing that try not to do it until we actually do that technique but it's kind of a cool one but we're going to take it a little slower so you'll probably hear a little more of that slapping one a two a one two ready and down So I switch those lyrics there. Sometimes I do, sometimes I uh, will switch them as if I'm singing about myself. So I like to sing about the boys. And uh, sometimes these songs are guys singing about the ladies and that's the case in the, with the lyrics the way they're written this way, which is what the Beach Boys sang, sang it like. Um, but also, as I've mentioned, a lot of folk singers take more of a na the, the narrator role. And so oftentimes you'll hear women folk singers and men folk singers singing about folks of the same gender in essence um, because they're just singing the story, narrating the story, but not necessarily singing their own personal story. So, okay, let's take it faster now. More up-tempo. See if you can keep up. One, two, a one, two, ready, and down. Okay, so next we're going to head over to pages 31 
through 33 and we're going to discuss a couple new strumming techniques and review an old strumming pattern that we did last time down down up down up down up okay so let's go there okay so here we are on page 31 with number six she'll be coming around the mountain we sort of have a new technique here ever so slightly it's not really going to change the way we do anything but there is a little kind of FYI. So the strumming pattern for this one looks just like what I've got up here on the top of the board. It's just our normal down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, up. The difference though between what we've done in the past and what is on this song is the time signature. So we've been doing songs in 4-4 time. This with a, this time signature with a C that has a line through it is known as cut time. So cut time and 4-4 four four time are actually sort of interrelated. 4-4 four four time is sometimes indicated with just a capital letter C because it's common time. More songs than uh, any other, more songs are written in 4-4 four four time than in any other time signature. So it's the most common time. Cut time the C with the line through it means 2-2, two, two. so we've cut both numbers in half, cut time. And cut time will actually look just like 4-4 four, four time. The difference is more in the interpretation of it. So this is in 2. If we were directing this song, it would be in 2. So she'll be... If we had she'll be coming round the mountain when she one do they fall one do they ba 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 ba. A lot of times in choirs and such, or even a band, if there was an arrangement of this, they'd rather just feel it lighter, like in two. So she'll be coming round the mountain when she one two oh one two three ba ba da 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 da. da just has a lighter feel to it. doesn't really affect anything that we're doing. Some songs written in 4-4 could easily just be written in 2-2 or cut time. Some songs written in cut time could just as easily be written in 4-4. It's not really going to change the way we play the guitar. Um, particularly. If we were playing with a choir or a band, we might see a moment where we, we're just playing a little bit lighter and it feels faster. 4-4 um, time done faster in a more lighter feel uh, in the singing sense would sometimes be written in, in cut time. So that is, that's that. They're the same and we've done this before. Down, down, up, down, up, down, up. Number seven, Tom Dooley, is written in 4-4. Four, four. So you got the comparison right there on page 31 for both of those. We should, we'll go ahead and, and play these. We're going to do She'll Be Coming Around the Mountain. Fun fact. When I was a little girl, I used to ride a uh, shotgun with my mom, who ran a stagecoach business in Deadwood, South Dakota. And so I was her little shotgun, her little sidekick, a lot of the time while I was growing up in those early years. Um, since I was a baby, I rode underneath the seat. And w that's where I learned to sing this song, was with her as we were driving that stagecoach with those horses giving tourists in Deadwood, South Dakota a tour around town via stagecoach. And uh, I always pictured when we sang this, it being a stagecoach coming to town with six white horses. Um, but it's actually a song about a train. So it's about the train coming and the white horses being, being a horsepower engine. So... Bummer to me. I still, I still picture the horses though on this stagecoach. So, so you can as well. We're not gonna quite take it that fast. We'll just go here. One, two, up three, up four. We have a two-beat pickup, so she'll be, and we'll be in one, two, three, four, one, two. She'll be coming around the mountain. all the other verses that you may know that you can look up. Alright, and Tom Dooley. Well, we're swinging these ones a bit today. We'll do that again. 
my mother teaches guitar uh, using this method series. She's like, why'd you put Tom Dooley in there? It's a song about murder and dying and how depressing. But it's actually, uh, the folk song, the full version is about an old legend, Tom Dooley. And there's even a place you can go visit, the grave, grave site. The legend is a little bit, mm, maybe he was actually innocent, or maybe he was actually guilty. There's, there's some questions, but it was the most famous case that had, that had happened around that time. And so this song's written about that famous case and that murder trial. And we're going to go one, two, up, three, up, four, up, one, two, up, three, up, four, up. Here we go. One, two, up, three, up, four, up, one. One, two, ready, and hang down your head, Tom Dooley. Hang down your head and cry. Hang down your head, Tom Dooley. Poor boy, you're bound to die. I met So it goes on and on. The rest of the story is is uh, full of more facts. So it feels a little empty leaving it there, but alas. In my younger years, I worked as a national park ranger and did a sing-along program where we go through history and use these old songs to and sing along around the campfires. It's kind of a fun, what we call evening program. And I remember doing that one with a lot of the verses, talking about that old legend. Okay, so now we'll move on to page 32. Pop music progression S1. This chord progression has been used in, dare I say, millions of songs. Um, this is a 12-bar blues. We're going to talk about what a 12-bar blues is in the next lesson. But we're going to play this one here. Uh, number eight, down, down, up, up, down. So the first clue to what a 12-bar blues is, is that it's a 12-bar progression. And then it's been known as the blues progression because it, it sort of grew out of blues music and then was used a lot in rhythm and blues music, which is now known as R&B, but used to be rhythm and blues. Chord progressions from rhythm and blues music were largely or mostly blues chord changes um, or rhythm chord changes, changes from I've Got Rhythm, that old song. So a little tidbit fact there for you. And we're going to play this chord progression. Here we go. We're going to go down, down, up, up, down. We're going to straighten it out. One, two, a one, two, ready, and a. And move on to Battle Hymn of the Republic. We're going to go back to our down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, up. I have a love for the old hymns. Just great old tunes. We're going to take it actually a little bit slower. There's a lot of words to get in. So, it says a one beat pickup. It's 
So you can pitch whichever range you'd like. Mine. Three, two, one. Mine. Eyes of summer. of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He hath loosed the faithful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His For me, that would be a great one to do with a capo because sing it there was in the low range, and if I'd have sung it on the other, um, the other way, it would have been in the my high, high range. So these examples in the book are perfect for the keys that we work in. They're not always perfect for the keys that we sing in. Um, that's why we can use those capos. All right, so we're gonna move on to page 33. We're going to do number 10 and 11. On this one, we're going to work on a technique that we've done a little bit in the past where we use two different strumming patterns. So I've put them here together. And so strumming pattern one is our normal down, down, up, up, down, which I've written out here, the first half here. And then when we have two chords per bar, like we do on Old MacDonald How to Farm in bar two, we're going to do the down, down, up, down, down, up. So those first two bars would sound like A, and then down, down, up, down, down. This is a great technique to use. Anytime we have two chords per bar and we have a pattern we're using for 4-4 um, four, four time, we can use the first half of that pattern down, down, up, and then use it again for the second chord. And so that's what we're doing here. But it's written out there, the two different versions. Now, as we play Old MacDonald How to Farm, it's a little bit tricky <coughs> because uh, there's places where the chord comes in in the second half of a bar, and then it also lasts in the first half of the next bar. That happens right here on the first line. So we're going to have an A, and then we got D, then we got an A again for the E7 to the A. So we got one, two, ready, and we got down, down, up, up, down. Make sure when we do that D to A that we also start the next measure on A, then we go to the E7 and back to the A. So let's do it again. We got one, two, ready, and we got A. The second line is going to have a similar thing, the, essentially it's the exact same thing, um, and then the last line has that exact same thing. So we've got a lot of opportunities to practice that one technique. We're going to do it just a little bit faster here and straighten it out. I want to ready and old McDonald had a farm. E I E I O. And on this farm he had some sheep. E I E I O. With a baba here and a baba there. Here a baba. Done. 
And there's multiple verses there. We're going to go to Swing Low Sweet Chariot, use the exact same technique. On this one, there's going to be more chances to play with the down, down, up, up, down. And then just occasional places where we have to use the down, down, up, down, down. So the first time we do that is on the second line. It's the third bar of the second line where we have A, B7, A. Not a big problem there. But the beginning of the third line, this is a spot that's a little bit tricky. And that's because we just finished doing a whole bar of A, and now we have to do a A again for the first half. Even though it's not written there, an A is happening. So we're going to have A, D, A, D, A. So that's how our third line starts. Let's do it a little slower. A, D, A, D. Now let's swing it a little bit. One, two, three, four, A. time. Two, ready, and A, D, A, D. And there we are. I love this old traditional tune. I think it's just beautiful. So you got one, two, ready, and swing low, sweet chariot, coming forth to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming forth to carry me home. I looked over Jordan. Dig it a little bit faster and straighten it out a little bit. Down, down, up, up, down. One, two, ready, and swing low. Alrighty, so that wraps it up for lesson five. In lesson six, we'll learn some more strumming and a new chord. We're going to work on the A7 chord, some new strumming techniques. Hope you're having a good time. I love playing the guitar. Hope you are too. And we'll see you in that next one. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. For help with other guitar playing skills, check out more of my method books and the numerous lessons available as part of my online academy here on YouTube. You can find more information about me and my products at kristenbromley.com. Take care.